How are you guys doing? Today is Thursday, February 10th, 2022. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to do an elite individual profile on Liam Hendricks. The elite Australian closer for the Chicago White Sox now turns 33. And of course, my intention with this episode is, of course, to focus on how Liam Hendricks is impacting the game on a micro level, game in, game out, um, even season in, season out on a consistent level. And of course, I'm going to zoom out and look at how he's impacting to the game on a macro level and just seeing what he's done for players at his position um, in order to advance that position considering you know how many pitchers there are that are vying for these very few finite pitching spots on 30 MLB teams. So with that said I'm going to digress and get into Liam Hendricks. Uh, originally born in Perth Western Australia um, I'd say his specialty really is just like closing. He comes in for the last couple of innings. He has incredible control he has or he knows what he's doing with his pitches he has good timing in it all too and he just doesn't get scared he doesn't get intimidated he is one of the best at least relief pitchers of the last couple years and just in the last three years alone he's literally been able to capture all of his hardware even though one of those seasons was uh the 60 game season so just to give you a little bit of background, he would go on and find himself getting picked up by the Minnesota Twins out in 2007, because of course, at, this was after he was playing baseball in um, Australia. He would make his debut season in 2011, however, with the Toronto or with the Minnesota Twins, actually. And in his very first season with Minnesota, which would be his age 22 season in 2011, he would go on to start four games for a Minnesota Twins team that would finish with a 63 and 99 record. After winning the after, or I guess after winning the division the year before, they had the worst record in the AL Central the very next year. In those four games that he started, Hendricks would post, or in the 23 innings he pitched, he would allow 29 hits, which is six more hits than innings pitched. He would finish with a 6-17 ERA as he struck out 16 batters in those 23 innings, which is seven less strikeouts than innings pitched. Um, after that season, he would go on to come back to the Minnesota Twins. His second season with the Twins was his age 23 season in 2012. In that season, he would start 16 games for a Minnesota Twins team that would finish with a 66 and 96 record. They had three more wins in the previous year. Um, Liam Hendricks, a second year in the league was the most games that he's ever started. In the 85, or he would go on to pitch 85.1 innings pitch, which is 0.1 inning more pitch than he has in like the, so just by 0.1 innings, it is the most innings that he's ever pitched in a season. In those 85 innings, he would allow 106 hits, which is 21 more hits than innings pitched. He would finish with a 5.59 ERA as he would go on to strike out 50 batters in those 85 innings, which is 25 or 35 less strikeouts than innings pitched. After that second year, of course, he would still have to fight for a roster spot for the third year in a row. His third year with the Minnesota Twins would be his age 24 season in 2013. He would go on to start eight of the 10 games he pitched in a season where the Twins would finish with a 60 Six and 96 record the same record as they got the year before except this time they were no longer fifth in their division they were fourth in Liam Hendricks's last full season with the Minnesota Twins he would go on to like I said in those 10 games he played he would pitch about 47 innings he would allow 67 hits in those 47 innings which is 20 more hits than innings pitched he would strike out 34 batters in those 47 innings which is 13 less strikeouts than innings pitched and after that season the minnesota twins didn't really know what to do with them um so after that he would be originally get he would get released and then he was claimed off the waivers by the chicago cubs and then he would be claimed off by the baltimore Orioles and eventually he was claimed by the Toronto Blue Jays in February of 2014. Going into his first season with the Toronto Blue Jays in his age 25 season, he would go on to start all three of the games that he played for the Blue Jays. Um, this season he would start 
or the, the Blue Jays would finish with an 83 and 79 record. He wouldn't even finish the season with the Blue Jays. He would finish the season on the Kansas City Royals as he started three of those six games. In total, he pitched about 32 innings as he started six of the nine games all year. He finished with a one and two record. He would go on to allow 38 hits in the 32 innings that he's pitched. Um, that would be six more hits than innings pitched, but at least his hits and in innings were getting a little bit closer to where he wanted them. He finished with 23 strikeouts in those 32 innings, which is nine less strikeouts than innings pitched. Even after finishing a season with the Kansas City Royals team, that would eventually go on to the World, or they went on to the World Series. They beat the Athletics in the American League Wild Card game. I believe this is the first year they had the Wild Card game, as a matter of fact. They would go on to sweep the Angels in the American League Division Series, the only year that the Angels have made it in Mike Trout's career. They would go on to win the ALCS, the championship series against the Baltimore Orioles to make it to the World Series. In the World Series, they would end up actually losing to these San Francisco Giants um, as that would be his or uh, that, that would be what he was doing, at least for that year. He wouldn't pitch for the Royals in the postseason. I'm not sure if he actually made that roster, but the Royals did go incredibly far. Following his season where he was split between the Royals and the Blue Jays, for his age 26 season, he would go back to the Toronto Blue Jays. Um, he went right back after he was originally traded um, and in his first full season back in Toronto and his only full season pitching with the Toronto Blue Jays. He wouldn't start a single game as he would be a relief pitcher for the first time in his career. He would pitch 58 games in a season where the Toronto Blue Jays would finish with a 93 and 69 record. This is the first time that they had made the playoffs since 1993 as a franchise. So this is a very big year for the Blue Jays. And as one of their main relief pitchers, he will go on to pitch 64 innings. He would finish with a 5-0 record, the best record he's had as a pitcher. Um, in those 64 innings, he would allow 59 hits. He finished with a 292 ERA. The first time his ERA for a full season was below five, let alone three. Um, and he would go and finish with 71 strikeouts in those 64 innings. He had seven more strikeouts in innings pitch. The first time he'd have less hits than innings pitch and less innings pitch than strikeouts in a season. And at the end of that 2015 season, um, Liam Hendricks would, of course, go on and see the Toronto Blue Jays um, make it through the very first round where they would beat the ter Texas Rangers in the ALDS. Not to mention this is the season where Josh Donaldson won the American League MVP. After the ALDS, they would end up losing in the American League Championship Series to the Kansas City Royals as the Royals ended up winning the World Series that year. Very big year for the Royals. Now, taking a look at how he fared after that lone year in Toronto, uh, after his one year back, he would go on and get traded to the Oakland Athletics, and he was a member of the Oakland Athletics for four seasons. His first season was his age twenty five or his age twenty seven season in two thousand sixteen. In that season, he would go on to pitch fifty three games. None of them he would start in uh, in a season where the Oakland A's would finish with a sixty nine and ninety three record. They had one more win than the previous season, and they still had the worst record in the division. In his very first season in Oakland, he would go on to pitch sixty four point two innings, just exactly what he did the year before. He would allow 69 hits in those 64 innings. He would pit, he would have a, he would allow five more hits in innings pitched. He would strike out 71 sh batters in those 64 innings for the second year in a row as he had seven more strikeouts in innings pitched. He would finish with a 376 ERA as he finished with an 0 and 4 record as a relief pitcher and of course following that season the A's really didn't go much further than that. However, um, this would transition into his second season with the Oakland A's and in his age 28 season in 2017, Liam Hendricks would go on to pitch 70 games for an Oakland Athletics team that would finish with a 75 and 87 record. They had won six more games in the previous year, but they still finished with the worst record in their division. Uh, in 2017, he would go on to pitch 64 innings for about the third year in a row. He allowed 57 hits in those innings pitched as he had seven less hits than innings pitched making it the second time he had done so in his career at that point. He would finish with 78 strikeouts in 64 innings, which would be the most, or at least this would be like the, the biggest differential between strikeouts and innings pitches. He had 14 more strikeouts than innings. Um, very big feat for him as well. He would finish with a 422 ERA and a 4-2 and record um, as a relief pitcher for an Oakland A's team that just missed the playoffs. 
And this, of course, would transition into his last season before he really transitioned into being one of the best um, relief pitchers in all of baseball. In his age 29 season, his third season with the Oakland Athletics in 2018, he would go on to start eight of the 25 games he pitched. For an Oakland Athletics team that would finish with a 97 and 65 record, they finished with the second best record in the AL West, and they would go on to clinch the wild card for the first time since 2014. In Liam Hendricks' first playoff stint with the A's, or at least in that first season, in those 24 innings, he would pit, he would allow 25 hits, one more hit than innings pitched. He would go on to strike out 22 batters in those 24 innings, finishing with a 4.13 ERA, and not to mention an 0 and 1 record. Um, as he was actually, uh, he would get designated for assignment a couple of times, um, but he would go on to be the opener in the wild card game. He was the first Australian born player to ever start in a postseason game in 2018, as they ended up losing in the wild card game to the Yankees. This is the year when Bob Melvin won the uh, manager of the year. So this transitions into Liam Hendricks' third or fourth season with the Oakland Athletics in his age 30 season in 2019. In that season, he would go on to start two of the 75 games he pitched in his very first all-star games or his very first all-star season as the A's finished with a 97 and 65 record for the second year in a row. They finished with the second best record in the AL West, so they would go on to clinch the wild card game. In Hendricks' first all-star season, he would pitch 85 innings, which is the most innings he would pitch or the second most innings he's pitched after his second year in the league when he was a full-time starter. In those 85 innings, he would allow 61 hits, which is 24 less hits than innings pitched, um, the biggest or the biggest difference, at least up until that point. He would go on to strike out 124 batters in those 85 innings. That is 39 more strikeouts than innings pitched at this point. He would finish with a 180 ERA, making it the second time in his career that his ERA was below three, all this in at least 60 innings of pitching as a relief pitcher. And as in first time All-Star in 2019, uh, he would go on and lead the A's to the playoffs. It's not to mention he was also named to the all MLB second team, the very first time that the MLB had the second team. And once they made it to the playoffs, they would actually lose in the American League wild card game. They lost five to one to the Tampa Bay Rays. And then, just of course, for context, this was the year where the Washington Nationals beat the Astros in the World Series. So, of course, this transitions to Liam Hendricks' fifth and final season with the A's. I know I said four earlier, but it's five. In his age 31 season, he would go on to start none of the 24 games he played for an Oakland A's roster that would finish with a 36-24 and 24 record in a shortened MLB season because of COVID. They would finish with the best record in the American League West, um, their first division title since 2013 at that point. Uh, and in that shortened season, because they expanded the playoffs or they shortened the season, they would expand the playoffs. But of course, looking into the season itself, he would not be named an all-star because the MLB didn't name all-stars this year, but he was named to the first team all MLB and he was named the AL reliever of the year. In his age 31 season in 2020, he would pitch 25.1 innings. In those 25.1 innings, he finished with 14 hits allowed. He had 14 saves on the year. He would go on to allow six runs all year as he struck out 37 batters in those 25 innings. He had 12 more strikeouts than innings and 11 more innings than hits. He would finish with a 178 ERA on the year, making it the second year in a row. His ERA was below two, the second time in his career that it was below three. And he would finish with a three and one record for the A's as they finished off the year. He would finish ninth in Cy Young voting as, of course, the award was given to uh, Shane Bieber after Shane Bieber won the Triple Crown. But, of course, being named the American League Reliever of the Year, even in itself, proved that he was the best player at his position. And that was two seasons ago. And once that season finished, the Oakland Athletics would end up beating the White Sox in the wild card before losing to the Astros in the division series. Um, the Astros would eventually lose to the Rays, and then the Dodgers would end up beating the Rays in the World Series this year. And this would transition to Liam Hendricks's, uh, I guess, his 11th and most recent season in the MLB. Before the 2021 season, he would get picked up by the Chicago White Sox. He signed a three-year, $54 million deal, which is incredible for a reliever to sign any contract coming anything close to that. In his age 32 season, in his first season with the Chicago White Sox, he would go on to start none of the 69 games that he would pitch 
for a Chicago White Sox team that won their division with a 93 and 69 record. This is the first time that the White Sox have won the American League Central since 2008, and the last time they've won this many games since 2005, the last time they swept the Astros in the World Series. Um, taking a look at how Liam Hendricks fared in this most recent season, he would be named an all-star for the second time in a three-year span, and he most definitely would have been for a three-year window had uh, COVID not shortened the season. He would go on to be named to the first team All-MLB um, for the second year in a row. Um, and he would go on to be the American League reliever in the year as he led the American League in saves with 38 of them. In the 69 games he played, he pitched 71 innings. In those 71 innings, he would allow 45 hits, and he would go on to strike out 113 batters. His 113 strikeouts are the second time he's crossed 100 strikeouts as a reliever, and the second most he's ever put up in his career. He would go on to pitch 26 or I guess he had 20 he, had, he pitched 26 more innings than he had hits allowed and he would go on to strike out 42 more batters than he's had innings pitched and of course his 38 saves are the first time he's even had at least 30 saves in a season in addition to being named an all-star he would finish with a 254 ERA alongside his 8 and 3 record his 8 and 3 his 8 wins are the most wins he's ever had in a season and not to mention, like his, like I said, his 254 ERA would be the third year in a row. His ERA was below three. His ERA plus sitting at 171, so incredibly high. That's just your ERA compared to the average pitcher. And then, of course, once this 2021 season came to an end, the Chicago White Sox would qualify for the playoffs, but they would lose in the very first round to the Astros in the American League Division Series. And of course, that playoffs ended with the Astros making it all the way to the World Series, where they ended up falling short to the Atlanta Braves in six games. But that leads us to where we are now with Liam Hendricks, as he has two more years left in his Chicago White Sox contract. But of course, um, what I'm saying, like the, the lead up, is showing that i mean it, it it was it came he came a long way from just being a starter to being um just like a reliever that was kind of going everywhere to establishing himself as a reliever that is definitely worthy of a 50 million dollar contract just to pitch one inning at a time or even two if they really want to leave him in i think that's really the hint that he's one of the best at his position he's really valuable to players and teams in the mlb and of course um I, 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 he's, a, he's a player that's at the top of his powers there's not much more i can say um but i w do want to take this time to thank the ESPN, the MLB, the Pro Baseball Reference websites for giving me all the facts and figures that I needed, and even the Wikipedia pages I used as well. Um, I, if you ever get a chance to watch Liam Hendricks, he wears number 31 for the White Sox. And if you're watching a White Sox game late until the end, he's going to be pitching into the end. The White Sox have Craig Kimbrell, one of the best relievers to ever pitch on the same roster, but Liam Hendricks is, he was the designated closer last year and still led the American League in saves. But like I said, that should give you a hint as to how dominant he is. And I can't wait to see what he does this year. And hopefully by this time next year, I'll have another episode for Liam Hendricks, hopefully for his 34th birthday. With that said, once all of today's exhibitions and matchups are done, I'm going to come back tomorrow on Friday, February 11th. And until then, I want to thank everyone for listening. I hope all is well, and I'll catch you with another episode tomorrow. Peace out.